Guys, it can be awfully hard, especially when we're in college and we don't have time to prep for stuff like we like to. And many of us think about getting the daily things that we need to be organized, like protein, fiber, vitamin A, all those good things. But um, most of us think, when we think of those things like protein, vitamin A, and all those other good nutrients, we usually think of um, bread meat, which is like beef, pork, and lamb. But today I'd like to persuade you that eating red meat is not good for your health and it's expensive and also not good for animals. So one of the health risks that goes into eating red meat is that when you cook it or when it's salted or smoked, um, it causes preservatives into the red meat, which causes um, carcinogens, which is um, cancer cancer cancer, a uh, causing cancer substance, which is found into the red meat, um, which can lead to other health risks. Like for example, in the red, um, the substance that gives the meat its color, its red color, um, causes colon lining, which is bad. And also another health risk is premature death. So a study found by the Harvard Study of Health Public of 125,000 nurses and male professionals that, was, that lasted more than two decades found that people who ate more red meat died earlier than those who didn't. But they also took into consideration other factors like smoking, um, if they exercised, how often they ate, how often they actually took a walk or other activities. But when they took, when they extracted that out of the study, they also found a correlation with those who did eat meat, still found that they died earlier because of cardiovascular disease and other cancers. And from um, a quote from one of the doctors who was part of the research, was part of the study, named Dr. Frank Q, um, stated the study provides clear evidence that regular consumption of red meat, especially processed meat, contri contributes substantially to premature death. And he's the um, senior scientist of Harvard School of Public Health. And so this would be a good time to ask the question, so if we're not gonna eat red meat, how else do you expect us to get our protein and other nutrients that is needed? Um, other things that you can eat are like fish, chicken, turkey, um, nuts, beans, whole grains, and it's also found that re with replacing one of these things with a portion of daily red meat, found that 7 to 19 percent of premature death had dropped. Um, and this is because nuts and beans and all those other things contain carbohydrates and proteins that are also found in red meat that can also be used. Um, Another thing is that it's awfully um, expensive. Like, I mean, how, how many of you have gone to a restaurant and then seen like a forty piece, a forty dollar piece of steak? Have you ever seen like a forty dollar piece of turkey or chicken? Mm -hmm. And um, so, in a recent study here, found that a record um, for a pound of growth, uh, ground beef was on average four twenty a pound, and then for boneless chicken was um, three dollars and 18 cents per pound and then for pork was 3.7 and I mean it might not seem like a lot but when you're a college student and you have to pay for your own groceries and then you have three meals a day seven days a week I mean that all adds up and you have to pay for your own books so I mean it could get awfully expensive when you are eating red meat instead of eating like something else that's cheaper like turkey or chicken um, another thing that you could be saving too is um, the environment. So in 2008, 9.3 million cows were produced for dairy, but on top of that, uh, 2.5 million of the cows were slaughtered for meat. So not only are we like, that's on top of the other cows that were already used for meat. So, and so by stopping, by not eating red meat, you can also save those 2.5 million cows that were died, that died for um, red meat. And then in 2010, they also showed that the, that the average cattle were going up. So if 34.2 million were killed for beef. For beef. Um, and also another thing, um, 
by eating red meat, there's also a lot of contamination, like for example, Chipotle, which it wasn't really found what was causing it, but from stating from the CDC, foodborne um, illnesses is found in one in every six persons a year, causing from contaminating food. So next time that your friend asks you if you want to go out to eat, in and out next time think of Chick-fil-A and eat more chicken. What did you think? Right, at first, um, my opinion was that there wasn't much of a pinching, grabbing hook that you had that you started off with. And then, from what I noticed, your um, information about red meat reducing carcinogens didn't really have much of a source. But then after that, you talked about the Harvard study of people dying from eating red meat, which I thought was cool because you also included a quote with a name and title. Uh, but then after that, you also had some more information without a quote. I mean, without sources. Okay, well, on, on some of the content issues, I think uh, he's nailed it. Uh, that's a problem. You, the best piece of information that you have is that study, the longitudinal study that you cite, and you quote the author, the main author in that, and I think that that uh, gives you a lot of credibility in that middle section. Uh, the stuff in the opening section I don't think is anything more than an assertion on your part, and you, that's a place that it could be developed. Later on, there's some other information on other potential uh, problems, for example, the contamination of food. I think you need some additional information on that. You do have one statistic that says that one in six people are subjected to food contamination. Of course, the link between the food contamination and red meat is not very well documented here in your presentation. And the, the example of Chipotle, uh, I think, is probably a good example of, a, an, of you know, some kind of food contamination, but the, the absence of a link, if it, if it turned out that it was their beef, that would have been you know, much more helpful to you than the more general information that you've got there. Um, the comparison on costs is okay. I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a way to try and sell the idea that people ought to do that. Uh, you you know, when you were doing, you know, have you ever sat down to a $40 chicken? Uh, well, I, I don't think that people, you know, necessarily sit down to a $40 steak every day either. And then the question becomes, you know, what is the level that is appropriate? Uh, at what point do we cross a line that is safe or unsafe? How much consumption is necessary for us to get the kind of harmful cardiovascular impact that uh, you're talking about in that middle part of the presentation? And that's, I think, where we need a little bit more development. Um, presentation issues, uh, eye contact is still very problematic. You're doing more reading than you want. I think you probably know that. Uh, you're limited in your gestures because of the notes in your hand. Uh, I do hear some energy in your voice and I do think there's some variety. So you're reading well. It's not that that's a problem, but it is disengaging. It's, you know, this is not just a, an auditory experience. We're not it, like listening to the radio here, you're right in front of us and we want you to engage and you're going to have more impact when you do those kinds of things. And so here we are at the end of the term and I'm telling people the same things that we heard early on in the presentation. You've got to make progress, folks. Uh, I think uh, the vocal presentation is solid, but the other parts you know, need a lot more work. All right, we'll stop there. <laughs>